Okay, hello and welcome to our presentation. Today we would like to introduce you the two great tools that together might become a great addition to your DevOps life. Okay, before we start, let please let us uh, quickly introduce ourselves. I am Simon, I come from Poland. I love pizza and uh, writing slightly overwhelming one-liners in Bash. How about you, Ari? Hello, I'm Arya. I like practicing DevOps and contribute to open source project. And in my free time, I enjoy spending playing a good video game. Okay. We both work at Red Hat uh, on automation uh, around networking component of OpenStack. In simple words, uh, every day we put an effort to make our dev teammates' lives easier. So in this presentation, we uh, we divided this presentation to three major parts. First, we will uh, briefly introduce the programs mentioned in the topic of our presentation for those that might not be fam uh, familiar with any of this, starting alphabetically with Ansible. So starting with Ansible, Ansible is an automation tool. It provides you with many built-in modules so you as a user can focus on what you would like to achieve rather than how to achieve it. So let's say you have a workflow where you need to install a package, add users, and start some services. Ansible allows you to run these operations without being familiar with the actual commands, but by using a very simple YAML format. Also, any script you have today can be used with Ansible. This allows you to benefit from the Ansible automation engine features, which we'll discuss in a moment. Ansible is also a very popular open source project on GitHub. It has many contributors, many pull requests. It's written in Python. You don't need to actually be familiar with Python to use it, but in some more advanced use cases like writing plugins and changing core functionality, uh, knowing Python can be useful. So how it all works. In Ansible, you write playbooks. Playbooks are basically files that describe what modules to execute. These are also called as tasks and where to execute them basic, basically and under which conditions. You then use the Ansible automation engine to execute these playbooks. The engine has several useful features for you. Um, one of them is the inventory. The inventory allows you as a user to specify which host to run the playbook on. So it can be either a dynamic inventory based on some resources that you created in your cloud or a static list of hosts that you manage by yourself. Another important ad engine feature is, of course, the modules themselves, which provide you with the automation code necessary to execute your playbooks. Now, let's see how it looks like. So here in this slide, you can see how a playbook actually looks like. You can see the very simple YAML format, which is basically a playbook contains two tasks. A single task e executes one specific module. In our case, there are two tasks, as you can see, one for in installing the latest version of Postgres, and the second is for start starting Postgres service. Even if you don't know anything about Ansible, you as a user can find this file, um, can read this file basically and understand what it does because of the very descriptive uh, way playbooks are written. Now to execute the playbook, you simply run the Ansible playbook command and you specify the location and the name of the playbook. You can see from the output that we successfully executed two tasks in the playbook, but nothing was changed. It means that the package is already installed in the latest version and the, serv the service is up and running. If it wasn't up and running, then you would see that something was changed and then it, wasn't, it, 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 it would basically change from zero to, to one in the output in line. Uh, another way to execute this task will be with a ad hoc mode, which basically allows you to skip writing the playbook and specify directly from the CLI the module to use and its arguments. It's very useful for, for quickly firing up some changes with Ansible as a one-time occasion. And now let's move to Terraform. Yeah, okay. So about the Terraform, uh... Worth to mention is that it bears a very similar concept to Ansible of defining things in text files. It's called as code. But in contrast to Ansible, it focuses more on what resources should be delivered than on how to configure them. And uh, it does that part really, really well. It was originally uh, created by HashiCorp, 
but is now available as open source product. And thanks to that, it not only it supports many leading infrastructure providers, but uh, also thanks to community uh, delivered modules, uh, it supports many, many providers. So in big picture, it works like this. First, as a user on top, uh, you prepare the configuration file. It can utilize some official built-in modules or some modules provided by community. Then, the, when the configuration is ready, the Terraform engine comes to action. First, uh, it processes the configuration files and captures the required resources to create. Then it resolves the dependencies between wanted resources. For example, here, if someone defined that uh, he or she wants two OpenStack instances connected to private network, first the private network uh, shall be created, of course. So once all steps are planned, the Terraform engine can finally press what's necessary on the resources provider's side to deliver the necessary things. So basically, what API calls, for example, should be called to create everything. And speaking of the Terraform's configuration file, those can be uh, those files are defined using uh, special dedicated declarative language. But don't be afraid; uh, its syntax is quite simple, as visible on the slide. Uh, basically, in those files, you define what thing. Uh, you want to create. Uh, in this example, it's provider and its resource. Then you specify the name of that thing uh, in the manner known by uh, Terraform. Here it's called OpenStack and OpenStack Compute Instance. And for some resources, you also need to define the custom identifier that will be used later in some references. In this particular example, we called our instance test server. Then inside the block, uh, so between curly braces, you can define some options and values for those options. Uh, those are separated by equal signs and new lines. And uh, it's worth to mention here that Terraform reads all the configuration files that are matching uh, some specific extension in file system and treats them as configuration file. So the whole configuration can be split into multiple files as the order, uh, because of the declarative nature, the order in which those files are read should not matter. It's declarative, and then the and, uh, Terraform engine should resolve all the dependencies. To, uh, to work with Terraform, you basically need to memorize, to remember these three uh, commands mentioned on slide. First one uh, processes the configuration files and prepares the environment to work. So in simple words, it will uh, create dot Terraform directory. And in this directory, the necessary modules uh, will be downloaded. In our example, as we see, it's the OpenStack module. Then if you will call the Terraform apply command, the instance will be created in the OpenStack cluster. As we see here in the example, uh, some facts are already known uh, to the Terraform engine. It, they are known from the configuration. For example, it's the name of the image for that instance. Uh, but some uh, facts will be known after this instance is created. Uh, example of such uh, fact is the Ansible, uh, is the access IP address. Okay. And uh, another thing worth to mention is that the details, all the details about the created instance, are kept in uh, so-called Terraform state file. Through this file, Terraform tracks uh, the information about the resources it created. And uh, for example, what should be removed when you want to perform a cleanup. OK. OK, that will be for the, first, for the first part. Now let's discuss shortly why one should consider combining the tools and using them together. While it, while it is true that functionality of both tools overlaps a little, they are designed to focus on other aspects. Simply put, they do, they do particular things better than others. Ansible is a great tool if you want to adjust and ensure specific configuration of some hosts. Many modules offer a system agnostic approach, allowing you, allowing you to focus 
what packages shall be installed without thinking on which package managers should be used for this. While Ansible can also be used, for example, to deliver some OpenStack instances, Terraform is just better at this, thanks to its state file and the ability to track instances by identifiers provided out of the box, it is much more reliable when it comes to performing, performing cleanup. There are basically three ways you can use these tools together. First one is rather obvious, just call Terraform first and then call Ansible. What is not so obvious here is that in this approach, you can use Terraform to produce Ansible inventory file and we'll show you how on to on, on the next slide in just a moment. The second way would be to use the Terraform module for Ansible. This way in Ansible, you can register facts about creative resources and easily utilize them in your playbooks. In big picture, you can save about two or maybe more commands. The, the third way would be to utilize Terraform mechanics like local exec or remote exec. Those may be sufficient for simple actions. However, even official Terraform documentation advises other approaches if possible due to problems with state tracking in such cases, for example. Okay. So as promised uh, on this slide, I will briefly introduce you how you can produce uh, Ansible inventory for, uh, file uh, with Terraform. So for this, uh, the resource called local file could be used. And this resource uh, can involve the template file function in Terraform to fill particular template with data. So on the example here, given on the slide, we create uh, two resources, two OpenStack instances that would be called my test server one and my test server two. And uh, we identify those Terraform in Terraform uh, under the name servers, which is visible in line three. And uh, what we do here, uh, we use this identifier in line 17 to pass data as an array to the template. The generated file will, be, will have name terraform-hosts.ini. Uh, okay. okay, and about the template file itself, uh, you can see here on the slide that uh, it uses syntax similar to Jinja 2 language, which means uh, basically you can do uh, not only insertion of uh, variables, but also you can do uh, constructions like uh, loops to iterate over some arrays or put some conditionals there. Uh, here in this example, we uh, there will be a group added called nodes uh, with two uh, node addresses uh, it identified by IP addresses from the previous example. And it's worth to notice that this inventory file is a regular uh, resource in Terraform. So that means this file will be created after the Terraform apply command is executed. And this file will be gone, removed from the file system after there will be cleanup with Terraform destroy command. Okay. We have one more example here for those of you who would like to call Terraform module from Ansible site. Uh, if you want to register some facts about created resources, you need to put that explicitly, explicitly in Terraform configuration. So like on the example on top of here, we define that we will be interested in the output called addresses. And this one will have a value that will consist of array of IP addresses from our OpenStack servers. And then in Ansible playbook, you simply put a register after the Terraform task, and you can access this value like you see in line 11 here uh, under name of registered variable, then dot outputs, then the name of the declared output. Okay. Okay, now let's discuss some tips and pitfalls to avoid that we have encountered during our job. So one of the common pitfalls in Ansible is related to checking whether a system is reachable. This is usually a problem when you run a task to ensure the system is available right after the gather facts action. For those who don't familiar with, with gather facts is basically the act of collecting a lot of useful information on your remote system. Information like file system layout, networking interface, and operation system details. 
When you run GatherFax before checking a system is available, it will try to reach the system, and if the system is unavailable, it will fail. What we can do in such use case is, as you can see on the right side of the slide, is to move GatherFax task to run after running the task that ensures the system is, is reachable. This way, we avoid failing on gathering facts, and we probably wait for the system to become reachable before running it. Okay. The second thing we have to, we would like to present here is how you can achieve real-time output streaming from Ansible. So, when you involve uh, Ansible or any tool in CI, you might at some point want to play a long-running task with it, such as compilation or launching some test suite. In such examples, uh, it's nice to know what is the current status of those instead of just waiting uh, until they are finished eventually. So unfortunately, there is nothing like this built in yet in Ansible. There were proposals like this. Uh, one is mentioned on the slide. Uh, however, they are not implemented and available yet. Okay, uh, however, as Ansible is open source, and if you are some Python expert, uh, you can patch it and implement such feature by yourself if you really need it. However, if you might uh, need it only for some basic shell tasks, like those where you can call make or something, uh, you may achieve it in a different, in a bit simpler way. The goal uh, would be to utilize the SSH tunnelism, uh, tunneling mechanism, uh, which allows you to create a traffic redirection from some point on the remote host to some point on the local machine, as visible on the slide. All you need to do to achieve it uh, is to run some background process that will read incoming input and display it. In the example here, it's, uh, here it's uh, the socket process on line six, and then use the SSH extra arcs option to on Sybil playbook call to open the tunnel. In your uh, shell tasks, then you just need to turn on the redirection of output to the special device called uh, DevTCP using exec command, like in the line nine here on the slide. Two uh, other additional, uh, two helpful additional additions, additional additions uh, that might be uh, welcome here when you launch such code in your CI system. First would be to ensure the proper cleanup of this uh, background processes. For this, the trap command can be used. Uh, so basically, it will work that way that the defined function will be executed every time at the end of the script or something. The second thing here it would, uh, that would be welcome is uh, to randomize the port number on which the listening process is running on. So you can run a few such processes at the same time. For this, uh, you can use bash and uh, this uh, dev TCP magic to see if uh, such particular random port is open and or not, just try to randomize and pick another. Port, uh, port number. Okay, so we are here almost at the end. Let me now uh, take the honors to conclude this presentation. And well, as a final words, I would like to say that uh, we recently started a project to improve automatization around the and uh, the testing around the OVN. Uh, this talk was uh, mainly to announce this and to share with you our discoveries and our uh, new experience we had. And uh, I hope from this presentation you will remember that there are two such tools like Ansible and Terraform. Both these, two, uh, these tools are great. However, their main focus uh, lies, is put in different places. So uh, combining them together in your workflow might bring new additional value and improve your work. Please try them. Okay. 
If you are looking for the slides, those will be available on the summit's the web page, as far as I know. And uh, also, they will be available on my personal website. I would like to thank you for your time and attention. I hope you liked our presentation. And uh, if you have some questions, you are welcome. Please feel free to reach us by email and yeah, just share all the thoughts and questions. Thank you again, and we wish you a great day.